Hi, I'm James Avila. Here I am at the Mystery of Sound for the last part of the How to DJ series. This is called Mastering the Scene. Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to use effects to enhance your set, add nuances, and even edit full tracks. My favorite effect is probably the echo, because it's not just an echo, it does a whole bunch of other things. You can use it like a sampler, and to edit drum loops and patterns and add patterns over other records. Um, but first of all, I'll just show you the basics of the echo. So if we play our track, this knob here controls the amount of echo. So that's just dry or wet. So this is dry, that's wet. And this is our depth knob. And the depth knob adjusts how much the echo degrades. So now if I do that with the depth knob all the way around, it doesn't degrade. You can tell at the moment the low end is missing, so if I put that on, you can hear the low end. It's the great thing about this is you can echo whatever frequency you like, so no top, just the bottom, or just the top two. When I'm in a club and I'm mixing, I just use the top two really, if I'm just applying an echo to a track, because you don't really want to blow up sound systems by adding too much bottom end. Now this knob here is a character knob and it behaves differently on different effects but on most of the effects it acts as a filter so if I turn it around you can see it shaves the bottom end first and then leaves the tops and then eventually degrades it all. When you echo on an EFX 1000 you can use the echo to make the EFX a fully fledged sampler and editor and I'll show you how. Let's play our track again. Right. So that was just a short section of the track we were sampling. But you can actually sample a whole two bars, so eight beats, by turning our depth all the way around and our dry wet mix knob to just past midnight because the effects unit is slightly quieter than the source. We count our eight beats. We switch this on, and then after eight beats, we turn our CD player off. So as soon as this is on, it's recording. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Stop the track. There's a two bar loop. So now that we know how to do a feedback loop, what can we do with it? Well, let's jump straight into the loop by setting the mix knob, the dry wet knob, to just past midnight. And then the depth knob all the way around to maximum. 8 1, so that's two bars. Engage the effect, and I'm going to jump straight into the track. 7 8, stop the track. Now, don't really want that crash there. So if we go back to 4-1, listen to the phrase where there isn't a crash, so just there. Once you've heard the phrase, you can repeat it straight after by hitting the corresponding bar to the amount that you want to repeat. So in this case, one bar. So there we go. We've now edited out that crash. Now, if you go back to the, any other of these buttons, they do exactly the same thing, but the amount gets smaller all the way around. So if we go down to the smallest amount, listen to what happens. I return to the two bar button, and it's remembered what I've done. Now, the golden rule of feedback looping is, if you don't return, it will just stay on that. But I saved it by going back just in time. 
So we can edit our loops. Not only can we edit our loops, we can add character to those edits by going to these smaller increments, changing the character button and adding fills. So, filter, time knob. You hear that makes a slight distortion and manually adjust the time as well. What else can we do? Well, if we jump over to the pitch echo, we can pitch it as well. The character knob now controls the pitch when we're in this mode. So if I add some of these fills, remembers exactly what you're doing. And it also remembers what beat bar button you were on in the previous section. So if we go to echo, and then back to pitch echo, you'll see that it's jumped from two bars to just two beats.